All right, so welcome back to the Civil FE exam review. In this video, we are going to be starting the dynamic section, and we're going to be looking at basically different parts um, that are moving. You're going to be dealing with a little bit of physics. Um, you're going to be dealing with speeds, uh, energy, work, acceleration, force, all of that stuff. Um, and your body, this, these bodies and these different parts are going to be in motion. So it's statics, things were kind of still, um, from a, uh, like a point of view where, you know, if you have static friction, right, something's not moving, right? Everything's staying still, but with dynamics, we're going to be moving a lot more. So, um, we're going to start with kinematics. And so I have a few practice problems for you all, and I want to go ahead and dive right into it. All right. So number one says a car is moving with a constant velocity of 20 meters per second for 30 seconds. Calculate uh, the displacement during this time. Right. All right. So let's take a look at this. So first things first, we want to write out our givens. We're given that we have a constant velocity. Let's use a different color. Make this interesting. All right. Um, that is 20 meters per second. And then we're also given a time. All right. All right calculate this, the displacement during this time. So we want to find displacement. Judging from my units on the answers, my uh, unit should be in meters. Okay, something to note. And are there any formulas needed um, or is the handbook needed? Well, just thinking about this rationally, right? If I have something, a car, draw a little car for you guys. Little car. Oh, I hope you like the, the high wheels on this thing. It looks like a shoe with some, some wheels on it. All right. And so if I know that this thing is, you know, if I know that it's moving, say it's moving that way, at 20 meters per second, and I know that it's doing this constantly for a time of 30 seconds. So um, really, if I know that it's doing this for 30 seconds, Then I know after 30 seconds, it should be moving after one second. So if I did 20 times one second, right, it would only be moving 20 meters. But if I did 20 times 10 seconds, it would be 200 meters would have moved, right? But this question acts for 30 seconds. So um, each second it is moving 20 meters. So 20 times 30 gives me, uh, and these units, notice that these units cancel, and we're just left with 600 meters. So this really wasn't super complicated, right? Nothing did really trick you up, um, but you do need to know, um, you, need, you do need to make sure that your units are in, are correct, right? So this answer is gonna be D. All right, let's look at number two. Number two says a train starts from rest and accelerates at two meters per second squared for 10 seconds. Uh, calculate the displacement during this time. So this is a little different. All right, so what information are we given? Well, we're given the acceleration, which is two meters per second squared. We are given the time 
and we're trying to calculate the displacement. Now displacement, I really didn't go over this in the first one, but displacement is the difference in distance from point A to point B. So in our pr previous example, all right, displacement, we were starting at, we say zero meters. And after that 20 seconds, we landed at 600 meters. And this car is on this, you know, journey. And the displacement is that distance along that time, right? So it's a, it's a dis, displacement just means distance. Okay. So, um, so I could even take it even more detailed. Like this is zero seconds. And then this was a 30 second. And so we could say at 15 seconds, this is approximately the displacement from where it would be. Okay. All right. Hopefully that, that makes sense with my shoe example. Okay. So for this one, all right, we're given acceleration. We're given time. We're trying to find displacement. So is there a formula that I can use for this? So, First thing is it would be nice if we're in the, since we're in dynamics right, section, if we go to our bookmarks, we can select dynamics. All right. And for these type of problems, right, I know that we're studying kinematics. And so I see particle kinematics come through. doing kind of a quick scan but typically the particle uh, rectilinear motion is typically what I what I go to for most kinematic problems so um, you you need to be familiar with the symbols because you're not going to know what's going on um, if you don't, so I know that, so if you're not familiar with the symbols on the exam, the first place to look is, uh, here. So S stands for a position coordinate, um, like S zero would be the initial position and, you know, regular S is the final position. Same as for T, if there's a, a T sub F, that would be the final time. And then T sub zero is the initial time. So sometimes these are, uh, are put in a different place. So acceleration is represented by A, V is represented by velocity, but we're trying to calculate the displacement. And anytime you're trying to calculate displacement, you need to be looking for S typically because it's a position or a distance from an origin, right? So, if I know that my, um, if I, if I know that my train starts from rest, I know that my V zero or my initial velocity is equal to zero. Right? And I know also know that my T is equal to 10 seconds. Now my X, my acceleration Acceleration is equal to two meters per second squared. And I'm trying to find uh, so I know my initial my S is zero, which is the initial distance. <laughs> it's going to be zero. 
because it starts at wrist, but my, and then my S final is equal to question mark because I don't know what my final is. So based on the information that we have, how do we determine, um, how do we, how do, which, which of these formulas are going to help us to determine the final distance or S, right? Well, let's walk through them, right? V is equal to V zero plus A, A zero times T. So do we have our initial velocity? Yes. Do we have our final velocity? No. Are we trying to solve for final velocity? No. Do we have a zero? Well, we know that a zero is two meters per second and we have our time. So if we were, if we were trying to solve for final velocity, then this one would be a good one, but we're not. Okay. Let's go to this one. All right. We have S final, right? That's what we're trying to solve for. So that's fine. S zero we have, which is zero. Do we have V zero? Yes, we have V zero. It's going to be our, uh, is zero in this case, zero meters per second. Cause it's at rest to start. We know our time, uh, that particular time, uh, is our time is 10 seconds. Uh, one half. Okay. A zero. We know that to be two meters per second and uh, T is going to be 10 seconds. So it looks like there's only one unknown in this equation and it's the unknown that we need to use and to solve it or it's the unknown that we need to find. So this seems like a good one. I want to go through one more. Let's just look at this one, right? So V final squared, right? Do we have V final? No, are we trying to search for V final? No. Do we have V initial? Uh, yes. Do we have A zero or acceleration? Yes. Do we have S zero? Uh, yes, we do. Do we have S final? No. So this one has two unknowns. So however we plug our answers in, we cannot solve for an unknown because no, it doesn't give us an answer. So the, the best equation to use is going to be this one, right? So let's write it out. S is equal to S zero plus V zero times T uh, plus one over two A zero T squared. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's plug these in. S is equal to um, zero plus zero times 10 plus one half times our acceleration, which is two meters per second squared. Uh, times what's T? 10 seconds and we're going to square that pay attention to our units, right? So I know that this cancels, this cancels zero times 10 is zero, 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 right? Um, if we do 10 squared, that's a hundred, right? That's a hundred seconds squared, uh, times two meters per second squared times one over two. Right. So notice these units will cancel. That cancels. And so you should just be left with 100 meters. And so um, that's very important that your units make sense, right? So the distance or the displacement over this 10 second period is going to be 100 meters. So our answer is A. I hope that you're enjoying this video. 
I just wanted to drop in and say, if you're looking to pass your civil FE exam within the next 90 days, then you definitely wanna check out the course that I've created. The video that you're currently watching gives you just a glimpse of what is in the course, and I have made it test taker proof. And what that means is, is no matter if you've been out of school for a while, or you just have trouble with some of the engineering concepts, if you study this material that is in the course, it will help you to pass within the next 90 days. There are also full practice exams. Yes, 110 question practice exams, along with review guides and study schedule templates to help you pass. And these, re these are resources that I have created for you. So if you wanna check out any of those, just head down in the description box below and check them out now. Now to stay up to date on any new videos that I drop, whether it is more practice problems like in this video, or if you want advice and some extra tips to help you pass your civil FE exam, you're gonna wanna make sure that you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications so that you know exactly when I post. And if you wanna check out the next video, you can here.